Evan Bourne had a short career in WWE, but he did create some very memorable moments. So since you guys have been asking for it, let's look back at Bourne's first and last matches. Before arriving in WWE, Evan Bourne was a teenager from St. Louis, Missouri. Like all of us, he grew up as a fan, and this led Bourne to getting involved in backyard wrestling. He eventually took his passion to the next level and began proper wrestling training while he was in high school. Evan picked things up quickly, and within three months, he made his debut before he was even an adult. He would attend college at the University of Missouri Columbia, and when he wasn't doing schoolwork, he would continue to wrestle. After about seven years of honing his skill, WWE came knocking, and Evan Bourne was signed in 2007. Like most new signees, Bourne was first sent to development to prepare him for the main roster. After further training and coaching, the original man that Gravity forgot was ready for his first match in WWE. On the June 3rd, 2008 episode of ECW, Shelton Benjamin was making his way to the ring while Kofi Kingston was doing guest commentary. The two had a little feud going on, with Benjamin attacking Kingston after a match the previous week. Then there was Evan Bourne, who was still going by his independent wrestling name, Matt Seidel. The man didn't even get an entrance, he was just patiently standing in the ring. When the match began, Shelton quickly grounded Evan by chucking the debuting star into the air. Bourne was down, but not out, and turned the tide with a kick to Shelton's face and then a Hurricane Rana. Feeding off the energy, Bourne got on the top rope and hit a diving Meteora, but it only gave him a two count. The gold standard quickly regained control by launching Bourne into his knee. The debuting wrestler continued to get beaten and thrown around the ring, and Evan's chances of winning weren't looking good. Benjamin took the fight outside and exchanged a few words with Kofi Kingston. Bourne literally got thrown into the argument when Shelton powerbombed the high flyer into Kofi. After that, the gold standard got back into the ring, causing Evan Bourne to lose the match by countout. This is kind of a weird debut, since Evan Bourne wasn't the focus. The focus was on Benjamin and Kingston's rivalry, and it felt like Bourne just so happened to be there. Even with that, I thought the match was alright. Evan Bourne sold really well, and his bit of offense looked good. Not an ideal way for someone to debut in WWE, but let's find out what happened next. The Matt Seidel name didn't last long, as one week later he was renamed to Evan Bourne. He teamed up with Kofi Kingston for a match against Mike Knox and Shelton Benjamin, which led to Bourne's first win in WWE. He continued to pick up wins, but usually lost matches against bigger stars. Even with this, the fans still voted for him to face Matt Hardy for the ECW Championship at Cyber Sunday. Unfortunately, it wasn't Evan's night and he lost the match. To make matters even worse, he soon suffered a dislocated ankle and tore his deltoid ligament. He wouldn't appear for the rest of the year, but did win a Slammy Award for Best Finishing Maneuver. Bourne eventually returned in March 2009 and began a short feud with Mark Henry. The high flying star beat the world's strongest man twice by countout and disqualification, but Mark Henry was still victorious in the end. With that behind him, Evan Bourne was traded to Raw, debuting during a gauntlet match against Randy Orton. From there, he would pursue the United States and ECW championships, but failed to win either. In 2010, the Airborne star competed for the first time at WrestleMania as a participant in the Money in the Bank ladder match, and despite some awesome moments, he didn't win the briefcase. However, some big things were just around the corner. In May, Bourne would tag with John Cena and even got the victory for the team. A couple of weeks later, he would beat Chris Jericho by disqualification and defeat him again at the failed 4-way pay-per-view by pinfall. Bourne did lose their third match against each other, but made up for it by defeating Y2J in a couple of tag team matches. While he had a solid few months, Evan Bourne's career took a nosedive as he lost a couple of pay-per-view matches and was once again taken out of action, this time for shoulder surgery. He returned in February 2011 with a win over Sheamus, but lost his momentum pretty soon, with continued losses for several months. He finally broke the losing streak in late May with a win over Jack Swagger. That seemed to be the kick Evan needed, as afterwards, he began teaming with Kofi Kingston, calling themselves Air Boom. They found success pretty quickly by beating the tag team champions, David Otunga and Michael McGillicuddy, on their first official night as a team. They followed up that win by defeating the former Nexus members the next week and winning the belts, which also marked Evan Bourne's first championship reign in WWE. Kofi and Evan would defend their titles against the likes of Miz and R-Truth and Jack Swagger and Dolph Ziggler, and always retained. Bad news hit in November 2011, when Bourne would be suspended for violation of WWE's wellness policy and wouldn't return till December. While he was away, Primo and Epico had begun chasing after the tag team titles. The two sides finally clashed with the gold on the line at TLC, where Air Boom managed to pick up the win. 
However, Primo and Epico weren't done, as they continued hounding Evan and Kofi. This ultimately led to Air Boom losing their championship to the Puerto Rican Stars at an untelevised WWE event. Bourne and Kingston invoked the rematch clause the following night on Raw, and this is where Evan Bourne's WWE career comes to an end. January 16th, 2012 was the last time we'd see the High Flyer in a WWE ring. Evan Bourne started the match for Air Boom, with Epico as the legal man for the Tag Team Champions. Evan quickly took control of the fight, and even hit a Hurricanrana, like in his debut. However, Bourne was unable to stay in the driver's seat as Primo tagged in and the champs double teamed the 5'9 wrestler. Not long after the first tag, Primo and Epico went for another, but this time, Evan Bourne was ready. The disruption gave Bourne enough time to crawl across the ring and reach Kofi Kingston. The other half of Air Boom went to town on the tag team champions, and once he hit the trouble in paradise, it looked like the match was over. Evan Bourne tagged back in and got ready to hit the Airborne. However, a distraction on the outside allowed Epico to knock Bourne off the top rope, hit the backstabber, and get the pinfall. Just like in his first match in WWE, Evan Bourne's last match didn't have much to it. He only hit two moves, which were both Hurricanranas, and the full match was shorter than his debut. It was really an unfortunate way for the man to leave WWE, but let's see what happened next. After the defeat, Evan Bourne would be suspended again for wellness policy violation. While out, he would also injure his foot in a car accident, which would postpone his return even further. In fact, it wouldn't be until over a year later, in March 2013, that we would hear from Bourne again. The former tag team champion returned at an NXT live event with a win over Sami Zayn before going quiet again. Another year passed, and after over two years since his last match on TV, Evan Bourne was officially released from WWE in 2014. Since then, he's gone back to the independent circuit and has wrestled for some high-profile companies. To me, Evan Bourne is a good example of someone WWE never fully got behind. He rarely got solid wins over main event stars, and when he did, he'd usually lose to them in a rematch. However, I think part of the reason he never became a main eventer was because of his promo skills. He didn't come off the most natural on the mic, and he could say it's the writing, but I think it just wasn't something he was great at. Other issues were the injuries and the wellness violations. Even with that, I think he could have been a bigger star in WWE. Perhaps he was ahead of his time. In the past few years, the style of wrestling Evan Bourne had has become very popular, so maybe he'd be a better fit today. But what about you? Were you a fan of Evan Bourne during his WWE run? Leave a comment, and also check out the first and last matches of Santino Morella. I'm Zach from Tap Out Corner, and that was Bell to Bell.